Hello everybody, my name is AB, this is Blender52, and today we are going to be talking about scale. No, not this kind of scale, the scale in your scenes of course, and yes, I did make this model just so that I could make that joke. Scale must be one of the most overlooked things in 3D creation, and yet it affects all aspects of our scene. From lighting, textures, modifiers, and even the sense of realism. Every time I receive a file from someone that I'm trying to help in Blender 52, I open it up and I see knives that are 7 meters long, graphics cards that are 5 meters wide, and trees that are as tall as skyscrapers. Now this isn't helping anybody, it's just going to give you problems. And today I'm going to show you why setting up the scale in your scene is one of the most important things that you can do. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just set up the scale in our Blender environment. So we're going to come over here to this right hand tab and we're going to click on this little scene properties. And inside there we'll find this drop down called units. Now, I'm not sure what the default actually is anymore. I've had my own custom setup for so long. I think it might be this none, which is Blender units, but we're just going to change this to metric. I thankfully use the metric system being a former colony of the British and so I don't have to deal with any of that five eighths of an inch nonsense. Then just here under length I uh, prefer to change meters to centimeters. I feel that this works best when we're modeling and I'll explain exactly why a little bit later in the video. So why is scale so important? We're going to start off here in this render that I've got open in Photoshop and I can show you that this wall size is 120 millimeters or 12 centimeters and I know this because I measured my actual wall size at my house and knowing this size allows me to bring in other accurate measurements such as the bevel on the wall and it's little details like this that really help sell the realism in your scene. And I also know that this book is 150 millimeters and it's modeled to that size. And so when I bring it into the scene, it fits the scene. Everything looks like the correct proportions to the cup and the pencil and the raindrops. So next up, we're going to jump into the actual blend file for this scene so that I can talk about the next important part of scale, which is how it affects your lighting. So often someone will send me a file and they have an area light in there, which is set to 100,000 watts. And then they'll send me another scene and they've got a point light that's set to a million watts. And when we're working like this with random scale and random amounts where we're just guessing the value of things we never actually learn what those values mean and how they work in our 3d environment now having modeled this room to the correct world size i know that i can place a single point light in it set to 100 watts and it will adequately light my scene how it would be lit in the real world. And I know this because the room I'm sitting in right now, I have a 100 watt bulb above my head. So I can work with these real world values simply by having everything set to the correct scale. So one of my own personal greatest benefits of working to the correct scale through every scene is that it allows my creative process to just flow. For example, people that know me know that I love to create weapons. So one of the first things I did was I created these two sets of rails and I modeled these 100% accurate to their real world counterparts. And what this allows me to do is that I can now create any model that can just pop out of my imagination. And I know that all of these proportions are gonna be correct. And I know, for example, I can take this scope that I've made and I can place it onto any one of my weapons and it's going to fit first time. Everything's going to look great. The bevel modifiers are going to match. The material proportions are going to be the same. And working like this just allows you to create anything you want and know 
that you know this knob i have no idea what size this knob is in real life but i know that it looks correct because one object in my entire scene is correct so for a great example of this i can show you here i've been working on this scene for a while and we've got a few things in here a mask and a can and a, a pistol and if i grab this can make sure i get that little top piece as well and i copy it and i bring it into my new scene when i paste it in it's ready the right size it matches the scale of everything else and it's exactly what we need if we wanted a can in this scene for some random reason so we're just going to stay in this scene for now so i can talk about the next point with regards to scale and that is how it affects our materials when we apply a material to an object that has you know some sort of crazy scale we might have to change all of our values and get everything messed up and confusing but having set this all up to the right size i already know that this floor is three meters by three meters and so what that allows me at a scale of one is that i know that each plank has a size of 15 centimeters so it's accurate to a real world size and i know that if i take this texture into another one of my scenes i'm not going to have to do any scaling or adjustment it's already going to be correct out the box and the same goes for the wood material on these little tracks or this little coal box everything is ready set up and ready to go if i ever need to use it again it also allows me to again just have that little bit of extra realism as I know that my wood grain is the correct size. I know that the little chips are the correct size because everything has actually been done to how they would look in real life. Okay, so the last thing I just wanna go back to as I mentioned in the beginning of the video is why I personally prefer to have my scene set in centimeters. And it's because of modifiers. So as you can see, we've got this cube here and it's got a bevel modifier on it. and the bevel is set to an amount of 0 0.000115 now to me it's just madness to try and work with with figures like that and it's going to affect your your texture nodes and things like that as well so if we just set this back to centimeters go back to modifiers you can now see that we've got a bevel of 11.5 and to me that's just so much easier to understand then this crazy decimal amount of 0.00618932174. So one last little handy tip that I just want to pass on to you guys while we're working with numbers and scale and stuff like that is when we want to change these values, at the moment you can see this cube has, the scale has gotten a little bit messed up. And if we want to change this back to one, what we can do is we can enter one into this field and then we just hold down shift and drag and they'll all become one and that just makes life so much easier i'll show you again if we want to change this down to 300 we can just hold shift drag it down and they all become 300. okay so that's about it for this video i hope you guys were able to get some some good little tips and tricks out of it as i say i feel like scale is incredibly important and it is something that is often just not discussed it's forgotten about and disregarded and just implementing this simple system will help create better renders improve your workflow and just give you a generally better time in the 3d environment if you've enjoyed the video please give us a like please subscribe if you aren't already and until next time cheers